What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we will be setting up Tailwind CSS inside a Symphony 6 project. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? You can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits just as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. Most people that have followed my tutorials before know that I love using Tailwind CSS. Tailwind is a CSS utility framework that makes your life as a front and backend developer a lot easier. You can see there's a predefined CSS file where you find loads of classes that you can add on your elements to style it. And I got to admit that there were a lot of obstacles with adding Tailwind inside the Symphony project. I hope that this will change in the future. I'm not going to explain what Tailwind is because I've already got a course on it. So if you are interested, I recommend you to check it out down below. As a Laravel developer, I really liked working with Laravel Mix because it's super simple to integrate into your projects. And honestly, it's just as simple with Symfony because we've already got Symfony Encore installed. There's one thing that we need to add in between, which will be Purge CSS. Now Tailwind can be installed through the CLI. So let's run a command called npm install. We're going to start off with a flag called dash D, which is actually something you see quite often with npm. It will basically record the npm package we're going to install as a development dependency under the dev dependencies property inside the package.json file. Then we got to tell npm what we would like to install. In our case, it will be space tailwind CSS, space post CSS dash loader, another one which is called perch CSS dash webpack dash plugin. Then we got to say, well, we want to globally so glob dash all pad. If we run this command, the dependencies Tailwind CSS, Post CSS, and Purge CSS will be installed. To double check if our Tailwind has been imported, actually any package that you pull in, you can simply open the package.json file inside the root of our directory. And right here, you will see a Post CSS loader inside the dev dependency section, Purge CSS, and Tailwind CSS. The next step is creating a configuration file inside the root of our directory where post CSS is going to require Tailwind CSS. Since we're lazy developers, we can use a mpx command to create the Tailwind configuration file for us, together with a post CSS configuration file. So inside the CLI, let's say mpx space Tailwind CSS space init, then a flag for the post CSS file called space dash p. Let's hit enter. This will create a Tailwind CSS configuration file and a post CSS one. So let's start off with the post CSS file. Right here, I've lost it, it's here. What we're going to do right here is basically export Tailwind CSS and the auto prefixer. Keep in mind that this is a JavaScript file, so I'm not going to dive deep into it. So just follow along. Let's hit a double enter right in front of module. And right at the top, let's create a variable called let Tailwind CSS. We're going to set it equal to the require method. And inside the require method, we're going to add or search for a folder called Tailwind CSS inside our node modules. What we need to do next is to change up our plugin section that we have right here. Let's remove everything, including the curly braces. And let's add square brackets. What we're going to do right here is adding some required files. The first one will be the variable that we created called Tailwind CSS. And let's add parentheses because we need to add a parameter right here. Let's add single quotes. And inside the single quotes, we're going to pass in the Tailwind configuration file that we have not touched, but we have created it right here. So the pad will be a dot forward slash tailwind.convic.js. Then let's add a comma. And let's add a new line called require. And in here, let's add single quotes. And what we're going to require is the post CSS dash import. We need to add one more plugin. So let's add a comma. Now let's say require. And what we're going to require is the auto prefixer. Now let's save it and let's close off the file because most of the magic will happen inside the webpack file that we have in the root of our directory right here. The dependencies that we pulled in are stored inside the node underscore modules directory. What we need to do next is to make sure that we require them inside the webpack file. Now let's take a look at our node modules folder real quick. At the top, right here, 
Let's open it and this will take a while to find the T of Tailwind. Let's actually just type Tailwind. All right. Node modules is basically a package manager for Node.js. Keep in mind that you don't need to change anything in here. You basically need to require everything that we have inside the Tailwind CSS folder. Let me actually close off the node underscore modules folder. All right. Now let's focus on the webpack config file. We're going to use post CSS for Tailwind. By default, post CSS is commented out inside webpack. So let's just navigate to the bottom and let's just create it all over again. And this can actually be done anywhere inside the code. So don't worry, it does not need to be happening at the bottom. But what we're going to do right here is to say, well, enable post CSS loader. We need to add parentheses because it's a method. And you might wonder why we're adding this piece of code right here, but we got to make sure that we don't run npm run dev during development, but only on production. Now the parameter inside the enable post CSS loader will be parentheses, options. Let's hit one tick to the right to go past the parentheses, and let's create an arrow function. So a equal sign greater than curly brace. Then in here, we're going to set the options that we have equal to post CSS options. So post CSS options. Let's set it equal to curly braces. And in here, we need to configure the path to our post CSS configuration file, which will be convic is equal to single quotes dot forward slash post CSS dot convic dot JS. Now what this will do is basically defining the directory where the post CSS configuration file is stored. The last step is adding our Tailwind directives inside our app.css file. You could also create a new style sheet, but in all honesty, you're mostly going to work with Tailwind. So it's not really necessary to have multiple CSS files for now. So let's scroll up and let's open our app.css file. Now let's remove everything that we have inside of here because we're going to add Tailwind directives that will be replaced with Tailwind code. In order to do that, we need to say add Tailwind space then we need to search for a file inside the Tailwind CSS folder called base. Let's do this one more time. So add Tailwind space, and we're going to pull in the components file right now. There's one more left. So add Tailwind, and the last one is called utilities. We also need to specifically tell Tailwind what file extensions need to be compiled. So let's save this file and close it off. And let's also close off the Webpack file. This can be done inside the Tailwind convic.js file, where it has a section called content. So let's go inside the array and hit enter. And we're basically going to compile files from two locations. The first one in double quotes will be the dot forward slash assets folder, forward slash. We're not going to add an entire path, but we're going to add two asterisks, meaning that every single file and folder right here needs to be compiled. Forward slash, another asterisk, because we do need to define the file extensions. So let's say dot curly braces and inside the curly braces, you can add multiple file extensions. So let's say few comma JS comma TS for TypeScript comma JSX comma TSX. Now we have one more next to the assets folder. We also have the templates folder. So let's say dot forward slash templates forward slash double asterisk forward slash asterisk dot curly braces. Inside the curly braces, we got to specifically say, well, we want all HTML extensions, comma, twig extensions. Let's save it and let's close it off. Now, most people that have used Tailwind before know that you can simply run npm run dev inside your CLI. But I think that since the release of Tailwind 3, changes have been made. Now, when you want to compile your Tailwind, you need to run an mpx command. So inside the CLI, let's say mpx space, we're going to do something with Tailwind CSS. Now let me actually zoom in a little bit inside the terminal. All right, space. Then we're going to add a dash I flag followed with the CSS file path where we got our Tailwind directive stored. So what we're going to do is to move back one directory. We're going inside the assets folder for slash styles folder for slash app dot CSS. Then we're going to say, well, space dash O because we need to compile it to a different file. In our case, it should be the dot forward slash public folder forward slash build folder. And let's just overwrite the app.css file. Keep in mind that if we hit enter right now, you will only see basic Tailwind classes. 
Tailwind 3 does not generate all Tailwind CSS classes anymore because it was a pretty big file before. What it does right now is adding a couple basic stylings, but if you add the dash dash watch flag, it generates new classes that you add inside your twig. So let's hit enter. And apparently I made a typo. All right, I see it right here. Excuse me. Let's hit enter. Now the watch flag compiles your style based on changes that you have made. Right now it has rebuilt it once, but we're not making any changes, so it's not rebuilding it anymore. Now let's open our compiled file. Let me actually zoom out. All right. Let's open the app.css file. And right here, you will find a couple Tailwind classes that you could use. If we scroll through the page, you will see some classes, but definitely not all of them. You'll see that the last styling is a dot block class name. In the last video, we already added our style sheet to our base.html.twig file. So let's check it out inside of the browser. Let me close off the console. Let's refresh it. All right, woohoo has been printed out, which is all right with a different styling than before. Now here comes the real magic of Tailwind CSS. If we navigate back to our code editor, and let's open the index.html.twig file, and let's add a class to our h1, let's say bg-blue-500 to change the background color, let's set the text to 2xl, let's center the text, so text-center, space font dash bold if we save it and navigate to the browser refresh it you'll see that woo has been printed out with a blue background color it has been centered and the font size is bigger if we then for the last time navigate back to the code editor and open our app.css file which is the compiled version you'll see that new classes have been added right after the block class name of bg-blue text center, text to Excel, and the font bold, which we have added inside our H1. Now that being said, this was it for this video where I showed you how you could set up Tailwind CSS inside Symfony. In the next video, we'll be diving into images in Symfony. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button.